Thank you very much, Janice. That was great. Um, so, just moving right along. Next, we've got Dr. Big. Birgitta Hansen, I did meet her earlier. Yeah, that, sorry, I keep looking away. Um, <laughs> you did. So um, now she is a research fellow in the Centre for E-Research and Digital Innovation, where she leads environmental and citizen science projects. She has a long history of involvement in shorebird citizen monitoring as both a volunteer and a scientist. Let me just load you up so you're ready to go. <laughs> I was wondering you where those players were coming from. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, look, I'll, I'll try not to dwell on this too long because I recognise we're a bit short on time. Uh, so I want to talk about a project that's just starting. That is, um, we're very fortunate to be a beneficiary of the citizen science granting uh, opportunities that came up last year. And I'm just giving this talk on behalf of a whole suite of people. Some people are here, which is fantastic. Some of our tech team and some of our researchers. So the background for this project really it's about uh, understanding the state of the national waterways. So uh, it's a really important matter for a whole bunch of reasons. It's a policy matter, it's a, it's a social matter, it's an environmental matter. Understanding and documenting what the state of the national waterways are in terms of the health. I use the word health, everyone loves that word. It's a terrible word, so I don't recommend you use it, but I'm using that word here. When I'm talking about health in this project, I'm talking about ecological health or ecosystem health. Um, and the reason, and you know, trying to understand the state of waterways is a challenge because it requires huge amounts of resourcing and expertise to conduct broad scale waterway monitoring. And there's quite a lot of uh, activity going on in the water quality monitoring space, although I do understand that that's become a little bit regionalised as well recently. But there's no national bioassessment, that should say bioassessment, that currently exists, although there's a lot of talk about trying to get these kind of bioassessments up and running. Now aquatic invertebrates, so when I'm talking about invertebrates we often focus on insects for these kinds of monitoring, which we're calling water bugs here, are indicators of freshwater ecosystem health. So when we have de deteriorating water quality, it will have flow-on impacts to certain uh, taxa of water bugs like mayflies uh, and stoneflies and caddisflies. And these can be used as indicators of um, the waterway condition in terms of ecosystem health. Uh, and it's already, water bug monitoring is already part of a number of assessments around the country. Uh, it's a bit of a busy slide, I apologise about that. Uh, so the National Water Bug Blitz was really trying to get at this idea that we want to develop, if we can, a bioassessment that can be rolled out across the nation, focusing on understanding or trying to document the state of national waterways, so streams, rivers, even wetlands, if we can bring those into the system, using water bugs as our measure. Uh, and there is already, we're very fortunate that water bug monitoring is already part of a number of citizen science programs like Waterwatch and Streamwatch. Uh, there's a network of experts out there that are already familiar with this program and I think that's really, really important because that gives you the opportunity to build on that expert network and help engage with and train other people and that's going to be a really critical part of this project. Um, so there's opportunities to try and expand the water bug monitoring uh, using the programs that already exist in these different states. And we want to try and focus on uh, a sub-selection of water bugs, although we're not going to restrict ourselves to that entirely, but one of these indicators, which is the mayflies, they, you know, people, the fishermen make those little lures, you know, make them all look little and fluffy. I think that's supposed to be a mayfly. Anyway, so we're going to focus some of our methodology on measuring mayflies in order to try and capture some information about one of these sensitive taxa. Uh, and we want to use a facilitated training process and extensive engagement through the Water Watch and other networks to try and get new members involved and try and get the community and schools involved. And the program has been funded through the Inspiring Australia Citizen Science Grant. So we've got a three-year program that's going to be rolling out uh, from this year onwards. So why, why would we want to do this? So part of this, of course, is trying to understand about the state of our waterways, particularly trying to capture it in geographically diverse areas. So it's a little bit challenging trying to cover all these different parts of the landscape. And certainly that's one of the difficulties for professionals and for governments, and it will be a challenge also for the citizens. But trying to reach out and engage with as many citizens as we can, we might be able to try and start filling some of the geographical gaps in data around water bugs and water, um, water monitoring. So we're going to be using... Uh, bit of a, a, a mixed approach in this project. We're going to be using our citizen engagement and citizen training with, combined with uh, technology to support their uh, participation in the field. And I'll give you a little bit more details in a moment. We really want to try and engage as broad a part of the community as possible. It's a really critical part to the success of this project. Uh, you know, the citizens will make the project 
and in turn the project needs to inform and feed back to the, to the citizens and the participants in order to help increase their scientific literacy, but also to try and increase the digital literacy of the, uh, the user base out there. So this is, uh, sorry that some of those words might be a little bit hard to read there. We don't have a pointer here, do we? No, it doesn't. I'll use a mouse. So there's really sort of three key stages. There's the technical developments, there's the, the actual field surveys, which is going to be done with the, uh, the experienced volunteers as well as the, um, the new people, the new participants and training. And then the engagement and communications is a really, really critical part of, of this program, as it should be of every program, because if you don't engage with, communicate with, uh, share the information with the citizens, share the outcomes of the project, then you, know, you can lose citizen participation. So in the technical developments, we're talking, about, uh, we're talking about upgrades to an app which has been developed for users initially to ID water bugs, but it's going to have additional functionality to uh, allow the entering of data and the transfer of data into our, into our systems, which are hosted at Federation University. So there's some technology, thank you, some technology development work that needs to happen there to allow that data transfer from the app. And then part of the program later will be to develop these uh, capacity to provision data to other end users and one of those end users might be the EPA or the ALA. So trying to make these systems uh, interoperable as much, as much as we can. It'll be accompanied by a website and a, a spatial mapping portal where the information from the blitzes will appear straight away along with complementary information as we can get, avail get access to that. Um, trying to build in some dynamic reporting and visualisation tools so people can see well, what's the information we got from our part of the world and how does it actually compare to historical information and can we look at how that changes between blitzes. And then we're going to have a trial in the technology with the volunteers, some field training kits and keys and guides and a whole lot of our supported, um, support and coordination through uh, some of our monitoring groups that are already there. Um, I'll just skip forward to the partners because I think it's really, really important to acknowledge the partners on this project. There's a whole bunch of water watch groups, some of the CMAs, the NRM board, as well as the, uh, the federal government of partners on this project, so helping us really engage with people uh, as well as try and seek um, connections with new organisations to participate and to contribute data. And really we're at the early stages of the project now, so we're in the technical development stage. The most important things really to pick up from this timeline is that we have the first National Water Bug Blitz in October this year. A second one will be repeated in October the previous year. We'll do an evaluation for the Commonwealth, but then we really would like to keep rolling this program out beyond that, upgraded or um, fine-tuned on the basis of the findings of this particular project. And finish it there. Thank you.